Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Batwoman. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, obviously, we're picking up after, you know, obviously the reveal from last episode. Ryan is obviously healed up, and obviously it is interesting how, like, that turn of events ended up happening. Most likely, Angelique got the plant uh, that she gave to Ryan from Ocean. He came and gave it to her as a keepsake, but obviously she wasn't aware of it being the um, being the Desert Rose that it was. Because in retrospect now, too, it's like, right, he doesn't remember so much of the, like, what he did on Corian. His memories were wiped away, so, like, the I guess he had stashed it away before his memories were wiped, so they never found out he had it on him when he left. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, it is interesting how that ended up working out. I mean, he had to have known for him to get it off at the island at the very least. I don't know. Maybe he t brought it with him. Maybe he woke up with his memories wiped up being like, oh, maybe it's just a regular plant. Maybe he didn't know it was a desert. Because I feel like if he knew that, then would he really have let Angelique keep it? He probably just thought it was a regular plant and didn't think too much of it. Maybe, I don't know. Regardless, Ryan is better, but obviously everyone having to deal with the fact is that Kate's gone that she died and obviously now for ryan embracing being batwoman saying i am batwoman and like you know N sally wasn't even able to go to kate's funeral but um kind of talking to her is like in, in the bat cave because this is where uh you know where you got to be yourself and so this is where i kind of feel like i know the best you know, know the most about you is through here because she got to know both sides as kate kane and batwoman you know so Obviously, a lot of interesting things, you know, uh, we had the whole situation where uh, Commander, uh, Commissioner uh, Forbes ends up getting gunned down by the uh, false face um, group. And the person who ends up witnessing it is a girl named Jordan who had kind of confronted him early in the episode about just like the way the cops have kind of handled things recently and that basically she doesn't want to defund the police like in a sense of like oh take out like it's just she wants to allocate some of that funding into other aspects and kind of wanting help to kind of build out the community and stuff and and because it's like yeah a lot of like black um deaths have happened recently so she you know wants to try and change things and it's like oh you want to change things so badly take a run for like run for a uh, powerful position or something of like that like politics but um, the interesting uh, reveal is that Jordan ends up being um, Sophie's little sister. I thought it was interesting. I don't know. I don't think they brought that up of her having a little sister in season one. Um, so I thought that was interesting. So I know I should have looked into it because I forgot to. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe the actress who plays Sophie, I mean, uh, the, who plays Jordan, is the actress who played um, Violet in Van Helsing, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the same actress, uh, which is interesting. Um, Van Helsing is a couple, uh, season five, the fifth and final season is like a couple, uh, weeks away. Regardless, um, she went to go ask for her sister's help because she witnessed, um, the false faces, like, killing the commissioner and obviously they, they saw her and she was like, I'm trying to get my sister's help, which she's like, Sophie's like, all right, come in, I'll get, take your stuff. And she's like, no, 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 I came for my sister's help, not the crows. It's like, you, you know, it's for her. She recognizes how corrupt the crows are, and we've seen that time and time again. To be fair and sadly, considering it's Gotham, GCPD is not much better. Never kind of has been, probably never. It's it's always going to be that negative connotation of like, ugh, you don't want to get, you don't want to ever run into the cops, in particular in Gotham, because you're most likely to run into a dirty cop in some shape or form. Seems like the same thing applies, obviously, to the crows as well, but... Obviously, it's like, I'm just here for my sister's help. Look, the uh, false faces show up, but luckily, Batwoman shows up in time to kick some ass. But then finds out that, oh, Angelique's behind this. Which is interesting because Angelique just came to Ryan earlier in the episode saying, like, hey, I want to get back together. I'm actually getting out of the gang. It's like they were actually, they learned that I learned how to make snake bite from Ocean. So they were going to give me my own lab. And she's like, I don't want to be the Walter White of Gotham, you know? Once again, I always think it's so interesting when, like, a pop culture thing kind of references another pop culture thing. It's always interesting like that. But it's like, I don't want to do that. And she's like, I just want to be with you. Because obviously for such a long time, like, Angelique's never really had a family unit. Like, luckily, you know, she was like, when... Cora ended up adopting um, 
Ryan, it, you know, she was kind of jealous and upset, but at the same time, she was so happy for her because Ryan got to have like a happy family. And it's like for her, the only person she really had was Ryan. And I think her getting adopted kind of pulled Ryan a little bit away from her, you know. So it's like I want to, you know, you're the person I want to kind of make a change in my life for because which is kind of sad considering the last time they met was her as Batwoman and she kind of knocked uh, Ryan out the window on top of a, a car on the street below. So, but we'll kind of look over that. But obviously, it's a conversation of what are you going to do? Because um, for Ryan, it's like she loves Angelique, but things are kind of complicated because for her, she wants to, you know, now being Batwoman, she's just kind of taking these steps forward in her life and being with Angelique, especially being mixed up in all that, you know, the, the pat, their past and everything makes it so you kind of want to move past her because it's like that's a you know part of your life you're kind of moving on from but also at the same time you and angelique have been tight since you were kids like she looked after you the candy lady situation you know, you being adopt like you being in that uh, that um home and everything it's like they've they've had such a tight knit relationship since they were younger so like it's not that easy to cut someone that's been that important to you that's been that big part of your life for so long it's hard to kind of cut them out so ryan doesn't really know for sure what she's planning on doing but um but then obviously i'm uh, cutting back to you know later on when she finds out angelique was the one driving she confronts her as ryan about like you know it's like who else knows it's like no one else but me and it's like, I got something to tell you. It's going to sound the same, but I was like, do not tell her. Do not tell her you're Batwoman. Do not. And she's like, I know Batwoman. I was like, okay, that's better. Because I was like, because eh, sadly, if she knew you were Batwoman, I mean, th maybe it would make things play out a little bit better later on in the episode if she knew you were Batwoman. But knowing Batwoman, I mean, it also keeps that thing of like, is that, well, you got to protect your secret identity because the more people to know, the more they're in danger. So there's also that thing, but it's also like... So it's like she wants Angelique to tell the truth about what she saw and what went down. It's like this way you'll be protected, but also you'll take down these people. Like you want you want a kind of a fresh start. It's because it's like, what were you thinking? And for her, it's like they promised me do I do one last thing and then I'd be done. She it's like I was told I want to put on a mask and drive. I wasn't expecting us to, you know, do a drive by. I had a feeling it was Angelique the moment like we saw into the car and we saw the person with the baby mask on had longer hair. Like I was like, oh, that's gonna end up being Angelique. Is isn't it? I figured that things would kind of come down to this. Ryan would have to confront Angelique in this regard, but obviously she comes. She's a lot more innocent under the circumstances. I thought they'd end up kind of crossing paths because I thought Angelique would have been a little more like the fact that she was driving. I was thinking like maybe she was a little more gun ho about this, but it's like no, she didn't know what was happening and just kind of got sadly dragged into it. So this leads to an interesting conversation because. Luke is like, whoa, whoa, you want to give her time to think about it, you know, to kind of figure things out. It's like, no, you need to just let the authorities know. But obviously, you know, Mary's kind of got her back because it's like if she can, if they can get Angelique to turn on um, the false faces, then this can be, this can work out. But Mary kind of shifts things up and says like, I'm kind of with Luke on this. And she's like, well, you're supposed to have my back, but it's like, I am. You remember what you told me about, you know, she constantly remind me because for her, it's like, I remember this happening, a very similar situation between Kate making excuses over and over again about Alice and look what ended up happening on that front. And it's like kind of suggesting she's doing the same thing, but it's like, no, Alice, Angelique isn't Alice. It's like Alice wasn't no one's Alice until someone makes someone leaves them be long enough that they become that. You know, because she, she had also thrown out there like Angelique at any point in time, Angelique could have done the right thing and came and confessed that the drugs that you were caught with was hers. Granted, maybe the argument could be, well, nothing she did could have really done anything because maybe, you know, no one would necessarily believe her and stuff like that. But it doesn't seem like she, she was apologetic about it, but she never really went there to try and mediate the problem is kind of what Mary's kind of saying. So I just thought that was interesting because for Mary, it's like. I will give her an hour to talk, and if she doesn't, I will call the cops myself because for her, it's like, you you reminded me not to let, you know, kind of like your personal feelings get in the way. We've learned that lesson with Kate, and I'm not, not going to let you have to repeat that mistake later, too. So it kind of gives Ryan something to think about. But then later on, when um you have Luke giving her leeway, because for him, it's like, we're a team 
like going behind like Ryan said just give her a chance it's like I don't have faith in Angelique I have faith in Ryan and the fact of the matter is you know that's what being a team is and like doing this behind her back would be wrong so it's like let's you know let's trust Ryan's judgment on this and it's like all right this is we're supposed to be a team that kind of has each other's back so I thought that was pretty dope because I think Luke before now probably would have been all about like hey like you know he could like obviously that led to some issues earlier on amongst you know team Batwoman but I think you know Luke's kind of learned to like you know obviously trust in uh Angelique's judgment because obviously amongst anyone she knows Angelique the best so um at the same time some other obviously many other uh things are happening like obviously Sophie brings um Sophie brings Jordan to the bar and it's like oh and it's like that thing of Ryan being like oh so you were saved by Batwoman huh? that was pretty cool it's like uh, she was fine well, she was fine you were saved by Batwoman it's like yeah but she was kind of you know cringe or whatever I was like dude I love that in the sense of like for one again for one it's another shitty Jordan like picking like cause obviously cause you think of like uh not just shitty but still it's just kind of like in the shitty in the sense of like oh you snot nosed brat type of shitty in the sense that like you had uh, Clark having to listen to his um, Jordan, his one of his twins being like, "Oh, oh yeah, Superman's lame or sucks." He's like, "Oh, okay." And then she had his, and then Ryan has to hear that too about, "Oh no, oh you know that's oh that's interesting to say that about someone who saved you." Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, like that woman's not crazy; she's super cool. You know, it was kind of a similar thing. I was like, "Oh, poor Ryan." Um, that would, but also because for her, it's like in Jordan's mind, she looks at Batwoman. Just like she does, like the crows and, you know, in the police, just as someone kind of not really helping. It's like, yeah, you're fighting crime and stuff like that, but you're not dealing with the bigger issues. She herself has got plans on trying to, like, rework Gotham on a, sh like, social structural level of kind of, like, putting money and fighting law, making laws and just, like, trying to make things possible of fighting yeah taking down criminals one thing but she wants to fight everything at its root of what, what kind of causes a lot of criminal activity in gotham and it's like wow you know it's very surprising kind of hearing her had that message and then also you have it you find out like oh like yeah that uh bartender is pretty fire right sis and sophie's like what no i wonder does she know about the whole um Sophie and Kate thing because obviously it's like yeah it's been a couple weeks but she said eventually you have to sh like you know uh, swipe right on someone so I don't know whether she's meaning like oh you need to get back out there because I know like things between you and Kate I don't know because she only knows about Sophie now because of her mom I don't know if she even knew about the whole because I think the only person that really knew outside of Kate and Sophie was like uh so, uh Jacob, I think he's like the only one that knew under that situation. So I don't even think her parents, or at least in particular her mom, didn't know at the time back then. So I doubt her sister knows knew that there was something there. So she's probably like, "Hey, like you're you're out, you know, and you know, it's like it might take mom a while to kind of be okay with things, but it's like it's not me. Like I, obviously I got your back on this. So, but obviously she's like, and Sophie makes this remark of not even you know. um enemies turned lovers type of situation of like even close to that happening because things are already awkward because well she arrested ryan so that already makes i think that's where she was getting the whole enemy and lover situation but also i don't think she's ready to move on after the whole kate like it's not that long ago she buried kate so i think that plays a role in that so but um by the time you have angelique calling ryan and saying that you know she's ready that she can't live with just you know have, playing her own role and everything so she wants to turn in the killers but you know batwoman shows up but sadly angelique's already taken and obviously turns out black mask got her and it's getting rid of the other people who are loose ends i think the other two people involved with the shootings there's that one either that was one of the guys that um i think that was one of the guys that was involved in shooting one of the people that came after her uh, came after Jordan, couldn't get the witness or whatever. Uh, well, we see one of them later on, which I wasn't expecting it to get that bloody show, the buzzsaw and everything. I was like, I mean, 
Supernatural's been on this network, and Supernatural can get quite bloody. Hell, even Legends of Tomorrow kind of got a little supernatural-ish with its last, with the previous season on just like how dark and kind of bloody some of the stuff got. So full on like cutting a dude in half with the buzz saw. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Granted, yeah, they're not going to show you all the ins and outs, but I was like, still that happening. I was like, that's. And what was interesting too is they kind of give like Black Mask a personality where she's like, she like Angel uh, Ryan had called him out for being like. Uh, uh, you know, it's like, oh, like, you want to tell me that you're a good guy or something. And he turns and looks at the dead body that's split in half. He's like, okay, I can understand why you've had that mentality. I'm like, he's kind of jokey a little bit. I'm like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. To be fair, he was kind of like that in the, because I, I don't, because I know the Birds of Prey version of the character, like, the way he's kind of like, like his personality. I don't think that's typically how he is. I think he's just straight up like a gangster mobster type. Uh, which he was in Birds of Prey, but he was a little, he had a little more like, psycho there was a little psychotic fun with it, in a, in a weird way to say. And I think we're kind of getting a similar, uh, a similar vein of Black Mask. He's not a kid, like I said, a character I'm that well versed in. Like, my only experience really with the character was uh, Birds of Prey and in fa the in Fabulous, the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. I can't let myself get off by just saying Birds of Prey. I've got to say the whole title. Why? Just because, I don't know. I, I like just being able to say the whole title. Regardless. Um, but other than that, like, it's just, it's just interesting. Which I, the moment, like, he was introduced earlier in the episode when it was like, oh, and here's Roman Sionis. I was like, hey, I only know your real name because uh, I remember your name being Roman from, um... Birds of Prey, so it's like, and a fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Ha, <laughs> there you go. Uh, but that's the only reason why I remembered your name being Roman. I was like, oh. What I also thought was interesting, too, is like, oh, he runs a cosmetic, like, or beauty company, which I'm like, oh, that's interesting, considering, like, your whole thing with the mask, the faceless, uh, the false face, what happened to Kate's face, and all this. I'm like, oh, it's all very reciprocal in that regard. Because it almost seems like he's a little vainish. And I'm, I'm curious, is that... Because he was vainish in um, Birds of Prey, so I'm wondering, is that an element they're kind of keeping in this particular continuity as well? Um, obviously, for him, it's like, oh, I'm trying to help out. It's like, no, like, I want... I want speaking to the GCPD, everyone out there, like the Crows, I want to know what I can do to help you. So he's trying to seem like the pillar of the community, so that he's, like, helping out everyone to kind of stop all the senseless, terrible stuff that's happening. Happen, you know, it's like a someone who kind of cleans up the blemishes for, you know, obviously for his company. It's like I'm and it's, it's since he's like, oh, I'm trying to help out so many people, my my workers included and stuff like that. He's trying to make himself seem like, oh, I'm the great sensible businessman while being a criminal drug lord under, you know, under that under the flip side of Gotham. So it's interesting how that works. But there was an interesting conversation where for him. In his own way, he thinks he's trying to save Gotham in his own right because he's like, you know, any other facet of Gotham, like no one's really saving it. The cops, the crows, they can't be trusted. And neither can you. Like there's so many people run rampant thinking they can't be held accountable for the actions because he's saying like in particular what his issue with Batwoman is. It's like uh, the crows imprisoned my daughter and Batwoman killed her. And when he was and Ryan was like, I've never killed anyone. It's like, yeah, but you hold the symbol of the woman who did, which I thought was interesting. I'm like. He hasn't killed any women. Uh, that uh, no, that um, Kate never killed any. Like the only person she ever killed was Cartwright. So she's never killed anyone. So I'm like, where where is that coming from? And you know, Ryan be like, we'll work together to find out what happened to your daughter. It's like, no, I'll get answers, and but you won't have anything to do with it. But I was like, what is that? Because Kate's definitely only ever killed Cartwright. That's the only person we're aware of. So like, who else could they be referencing? I've got to know what that's all about. Because I, I don't think they're setting it up to be like, oh, Kate had other secrets. I just, I'm wondering, like, is he misinformed about that or like what? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time in this continuity that someone got misinformed because there was a whole thing in season six. Was it Kate and James believing Oliver killed his son when in actuality, what, you know, that whole thing. So it might be a similar fake out, like someone setting this all in motion like that. But it's always interesting when you have a criminal who does criminal things, who thinks, Hey, I'm changing it. I'm going to change the city for the better because uh, I'm a hold those who believe themselves unaccountable accountable, you know. So I just think that's kind of a fascinating um, aspect of the whole situation. Luckily, Sophie shows up in time to back up Batwoman, so they're able to get there and rescue um, Angelique. But Angelique doesn't turn on the shooters, she actually turns herself in because it turns out. 
Black Mask has been keeping an eye on her. I mean, he was able to jump on Angelique so quickly, probably because he's he probably monitors the phones and stuff like that of everyone uh, who's in his employ. So he threatened Ryan's life if Angelique didn't um, take the fall for this, because you figured that was because like that's the only person in this world she has, and it's like. She can do the time. She'll face whatever punishment. But she can never live with herself if something happened to Ryan because of her. So, And that's why I'm like, if she knew that Ryan was Batwoman, knowing Batwoman is one thing. Like, believing that Ryan knows Batwoman is one thing. But if she knew that she was Batwoman, maybe it'd make her feel a little better knowing like, hey, she can take care of herself. But it might make you worry even more because that means on double fronts that the false face will come after her. Uh, because it'll come after her as Batwoman, but obviously knowing she's Batwoman would put her even in more danger, you know, would put Angelique in even more danger, once again, knowing a superhero, a secret identity, so it's a whole thing within itself, so, we do have Ryan um, with Luke and Mary at the end of the episode with the rules, obviously three being that no matter what, we, you know, support each other, um, Kind of, and then also, uh, I forgot what exactly number two was, but basically it was like that we kind of keep each other in check type of thing. Like how you guys kind of kept me in check today with the whole how I was going to handle the Angelique thing. Like obviously, yeah, you supported me whether you like kind of, you know, agreed with me or not. But also the fact is for all the bad people that we talk, take off of the streets of Gotham, we need to put more good out there. So it can't just be about, oh, taking out the bad guys. We got to add and we got to bring more back to the streets and you know add more like life and good to Gotham so Jordan's operations and stuff like that what she's running um, they're planning on kind of bringing some more support to stuff like that so I thought that was pretty dope because that's kind of what Bruce did anyway and, I, and obviously that's the thing that Kate did she tried she was doing the same thing for Gotham as well so it's like helping people out well in on many different facets uh, when it came to Gotham um, you even have Sophie you know, talking to um, Jordan at the end, because Jordan was like, yeah, it's not right that Angelique takes the fall. I was like, yeah, it's the law, but obviously it still doesn't sit well with Sophie. Because obviously, a lot of stuff on Coriana made her kind of question, I think, her position with the Crows, but also, like, what she wants to do. And I'm curious to see what that looks like. I think, I think... Maybe after this season, she won't be with the Crows anymore. I think she might go her own way. Like I said, maybe private investigator. Maybe she opens up her own security firm or something like that. I don't know. Which is kind of interesting considering that's kind of what the Crows are. But I, I don't know. I'm curious to see. Because like for her, it, it might be a thing of she might want to try and change where the Crows are and their, their reception and per, the people's perception of them. But it might be something like she wants to change it from the inside out. But that might be easier said than done. And... Maybe it's just the better choice would be to kind of cut, take a cut, a clean break from them and just kind of do our own thing. Like I said, I'm curious what that would necessarily look like. And, you know, but obviously I think maybe this means we might be seeing a little bit more of her sister. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be curious um, to see about that in the long run. I am curious too, like, would they potentially set up a whole Sophie and um, Ryan thing? I would, I would assume not considering like, well, Sophie just lost Kate, quote unquote. And Angelique just went to jail for Ryan, so I'm like, neither one's in a position where I think either one's really ready to go for it. Plus, their complicated past would complicate that heavily. Plus, it'd be interesting if um, Sophie ended up with another Batwoman, once again, not realizing she was with Batwoman again. You know, that'd be uh, interesting in its own right. But a really interesting thing about this episode is also Julia. We have her looking more into the crash for... Um, Jacob, because Jacob, you know, the reports are saying like, oh, it was a lightning strike or something like that. But he's like, I don't believe that. For Julia, she just wants him to have some peace of mind. But for him, it's like, I'm not going to have peace until I kill everyone responsible or at the very, anyone that was kind of connected or at the very least the person directly responsible for what happened to Kate's plane. So he's like, because of that, if you can find find something that uh, proves me wrong, Julia, I'll let it go. But until then, I'm going to like, if you you know, I'm going to keep going down this route. And if you find that person, I'm going to kill them myself. Because we had seen earlier in the episode after Commissioner Forbes had died, like Sophie was trying to contact um, Jacob to make some appearance to kind of talk, you know. But he was kind of nowhere to be found. I figured he was still kind of grieving because obviously, you know, Mary was thanking Ryan early in the episode. Like, thanks for being there for, you know, me and Luke. You know, it's like letting me cry for as much as I want to eat as much ice cream out of the freezer. You know, because she's like, I don't think I could have gotten through this whole Kate thing alone, you know. 
and it's like neither me nor Luke, and luckily we we both had you. So Jacob's kind of been handling his on his own. Yes, Sophie's grieving as well, but I, Jacob being who he is, especially after everything, it's like you wanted to make sure that this Kate situation didn't turn into a Beth situation, and. I think for him, it's like, he even says because of everything he's been through, now knowing like, oh, uh, one of my, my daughter kept the, one, one daughter kept the secret of a um, uh, medical clinic uh, while another kept be the secret of being Batwoman. So it's a situation of also considering the whole Alice thing, it's like you never want to take any of these reports at face value. It's understandable. But then the interesting thing, well, the whole point was finishing it up. Like, I think that type of things of like, he doesn't want to admit it because the last time he did, well, once again, Beth became Alice. She went through so much. She was locked up for 11 years and became kind of the monster she is today. Uh, obviously not 100% on her. And in a, in, a, in a weird, crazy way, it's not all on Carthright either. Yes, he played a massive part in it, but obviously it's more so another angle to this is, I mean, once again, we don't know who she would have been if it wasn't for Enigma and um, Sophia's interference. They made her obsessive, and that kind of made that con that aspect of Alice consume her, wanting revenge and stuff. So, yes, yeah, she was dead set on it before, but we don't know what that would have looked like prior to Sophia and Enigma's manipulating of her mind. So, there's that. But, um... Interestingly enough, speaking of Enigma, we have Julia at the very, um, she's contacting someone about it, and they're like, oh, yeah, we, we already know, we talked about it. She's like, remember we had that conversation about your accent? She's like, why, do I don't, why don't I remember that? I'm like, okay, because Julia has been missing from the uh, show for a little while, and I'm like, okay, what's up with that? Like, And now they're kind of like very sporadically bringing her back, and I'm like, okay, so there's definitely something going up here, because obviously we know memories being messed with. Well, I'm like, okay, Enigma, especially considering we find out later on in the episode, well, because we found out earlier in the episode, the person who has Kate in the sewers and everything is Black Mask, which is like, yeah, they think you're dead, and it's like, you know, you'll surprise them, you know, show them kind of like, you know, a life after death or something like that. And then at the end, he brings in someone, and the moment that person popped up, I was like, you're Enigma, aren't you? And she is, which I've seen that actress in a multitude of things. I want to say the sci-fi show Alpha. I don't know if that's the same actress. I feel like there's these two There's two particular actresses who have a similar face I keep confusing. Um, this actress, I think I kind of end up confusing her with the actress that was in Arrow. She's the one that... Um, they look at least a little bit alike in my head, so I can kind of confuse them a little bit. I'm trying to remember... I don't remember her character's name. She's the one that was trying to revive the League by going to the other... Um, Lazarus pits that were kind of in the world that her I confuse the actress a little bit I want to say but this is the one that was from Alphas who was at, good at like her ability was like she could uh, push people basically she tells someone to do something and they do it like she could, could manipulate and control people like that I believe it's the same actress I, like I said I've seen her pop up in other things as well uh, she wasn't in Van Helsing now that I'm speaking of it she wasn't um God, the other one, the one that was with Dimitri, not his sister, but I'm blanking on her. She was like, was it Rebecca? Was that it? God, I'm, that was so long ago now, I'm kind of blanking on it. I wonder, That might have been the same actress. Uh, once, I'm terrible with names and faces sometimes, I do apologize. I think that might be the same actress. Regardless, this kind of opens up a lot of questions of, hey, maybe Black, Black Mask is definitely the one that was involved. And it turns out the reason why Kate's face is the way it is, is because she fought... Um, some of his men, and that's what happened. So, if he's bringing down Kate's plane, and he's kind of going about things the way he is, I don't think he knows that she's Batwoman. Maybe he does, but I think more so than anything, it's because of who she is. She's Kate Kane. He has issues with the crows, so this might be like a middle finger to Jacob, because he's trying to get Enigma to probably do what she did to Alice and kind of messing with her mind. And it's like, they're probably going to like reconstruct her face a little bit as she recovers. So she's going to be kind of a different person. Once again, that's probably how they're going to write around the fact is that Ruby Rose isn't playing Kate anymore. So they might, I think I was looking at something being like, oh, they've got a different actress playing Kate. So maybe that's the way to kind of work around it. Like I brought up uh, last week, kind of a similar, similar situation to Ralph. 
aka elongated man on the flash, like kind of a similar thing, but not really. I don't know. Um, they'll probably end up having to handle this quite differently than the Ralph situation to a certain extent. Uh, just be, you, know, you get what I'm trying to say. So, I don't know. I just, I just thought that was kind of interesting. So, they don't want, because like, for them, it's like if she recognizes her face, then that kind of connects to the memory. So, like, if they give her a new face, it's going to play into that. So, I think, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if they know that she's Batwoman or not. I wonder. Uh, cause part of me was like, you don't think they're kind of going down like a Red Hood type of storyline, like with Kate, that you think they're kind of doing like a Jason Todd thing. I'm I'm wondering, is that kind of where they're going with that, with the Enigma thing? That might be, I might be reading too much into it. I'm just saying it's, you know, a, 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 you know, a, someone related to the Bat, in the Bat family being brought back to be evil, like, to a certain extent. So that makes me immediately think of like the Jason Todd Red Hood situation. Um... This might be like uh, Black Mask, like ultimate revenge against um, Gotham, or trying his way about bringing change in Gotham. Now, whether it is just a personal, like I said, middle finger to the crows because he said the crows arrested his daughter, Batwoman, killed her. So I, I don't know whether this is a twofold thing or whether it's just simply the whole oh, like your who runs the crows, Jacob Kane. This is his daughter. Use her against them. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front. But then we also have the Alice thing, which Alice is kind of drowning in her sorrow about Kate. And then she proceeds to be visited by a um, Kate as a kid. And obviously, it's just she ends up kind of figuring out, like, oh, I'm literally, oh, once again, I'm having a mental breakdown. Because she was like, remember, it happened when you learned how to sow human flesh or when you had to shut off your own moral um, code to, uh, you know, scorch a, a lady, and I was like, oh, right, uh, Carthrite's mom, I'm assuming is kind of what, I, if I remember correctly, so, now it's like, okay, which, interesting enough, she ended up pulling that cat out of the, um, box, because it's, it's supposed to be dead, but it's alive, and it's wearing a purple sweater, I was like, the moment that she had, it's like, I saw the purple, I was like, all right, the uh, Cheshire cat, right, um, but it's like to it's all about erasing her pain because it's like you've never actually had to like grieve like you've never actually ever taken the time to grieve and just kind of go with the flow of the natural flow of dealing with things. Ironically enough, you have Mary and Luke be and you know um, Sophie as well as Jacob all kind of handling grief in their own way. But someone who's never really had an opportunity to because she's always just kind of you know, buried it to kind of, you know, because of her psychotic break, she just kind of buries it and just kind of moves on. So it's like, you don't know what's going to happen the next time. Like if you let all this grief overtake you about Kate. So the best way is to kind of forget about her pain by making like your mind is in a way that is kind of limitless where it's like you, it's the bounds of your imagination. So it's like you can trick your mind into forgetting everything there is about Kate and it makes you wonder, like, Kate is such a cornerstone of many facets of who she is, not only as a twin, but also, like, the key cornerstone of a lot of her revenge and hatred. So, if, like, she ends up forgetting about Kate, what does that mean about her as Alice? I'm sure she still has her dad to, like, hang on to that anger, but once she, which is ironic, you know, forgetting about Kate, considering Kate is going to end up getting with a, having a new face and kind of forgetting who she is, so... Interesting parallels in many different regards on that front. I'm just really curious to ultimately see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.